Gotta be true to yourself. In a world there's nothing else. nothing else. Gotta play the game right, gotta make your path. You scratch, you dig, you lay on your ground, you busting your rounds. Nobody gonna stop you. No ops, no cops, everything about you. Looking good, you good, she good. She good. Y'all people really wanna know the reason. What's that? It's that ripple effect. That's just that ripple, ripple. That's just that ripple effect. What you do, come back, come triple. Back, triple. Hey, what's going on? It's your girl, Kate. I'm back in Ripple Effect. You already know what it is, and you already know the vibe. Shout out to all the supporters. Y'all already know what it is. Appreciate y'all so much. New subscribers. We're getting new subscribers every day now. I see it. Y'all loving the content, but I also told y'all I was going to be putting out new content. Fast and Furious is coming out. Like, I'm serious. Like, it's on. I got a lot of stuff out the way. It's all about you now. It's all about the playoffs. Let's go. We also got to talk about some of the NFL stuff that's going on and some of the things that seem to be happening or are still on kind of like in a holding pattern. But I see you checking out my Garfield, you know, where my 80s baby's at. Remember this 90s cartoon, right? Yeah, it's felt a little nostalgic. But, um, but anyway, we got to get into it. We got to see what's going on. The Pelicans game last night, right? I know a lot of people were talking about Zion and if he was playing, they would be this, they would be that. You know, when he was playing, they were like the second seed in the West. I know. I know. That's all I can say is I know. And I'm going to give you a little background in case y'all don't know. Because I know right now we live in a society where we just want to just so rush to judgment without kind of getting a full picture. So I'm going to give you a little bit more more context. And, and yeah, I know some of y'all don't need too much context outside of yeah he needs to get into shape we know that and if you've been listening to me for a while and you've been that faithful listener you know i told you that when he was at duke when his shoe blew up right we we had that conversation 82 games in an nba season if you've ever had the luxury of playing ball in your off time and just just a regular pickup game you can see how windy he gets right so um and by no means am i comparing that but it's just to give you a little, you know, perspective because some people just want to rush to judgment and don't understand, you know, about what it means to be in that level of shape or just any shape in general. Like, it's not easy. I know these guys make it look so easy, but it's not. It's not. You run up and down the court for, you know, a couple minutes and let's see how you feel. Let's, let's hear you talk after that game, you know, see if you have something, you know, intelligent to say, but... <laughs> Um, but yeah, with Zion, just to give you a little context, I have to, you know, um, educate my listeners. And just in case, if you don't know, if you know, you know, cool. You know, just vibe with me for a minute. Um, you see Zion, when he was at Duke, doing his thing, had Obama and everybody, you know, watching his games. They were selling those tickets for, like, NBA games. Some of them more than NBA games. Just because that's who they wanted to see. Zion was the... The second coming to the LeBron James, right? Hence the all white, right? When he was drafted number one overall to the New Orleans Pelicans, right? So he didn't necessarily want to go through the draft that early. I know that sounds crazy, all the money, all the accolades, all the different, you know, uh, other endorsements that he's been offered. I get it, but you know, this NIL, I don't know if he knew that was coming or if that was somewhere in his future. I don't know, but from what this is coming from him, right? Um, I watch a lot of interviews, a lot of different podcasts. JJ Redick does a great job with his podcast. Um, and he just, you know, brought it down to a human level because I think sometimes people forget because these guys do superhuman things that we kind of forget that they're human. So let's bring it to a human level for a second. You know, he felt like he wasn't ready, whether that was mentally, physically, or all of the above. He felt like he was not ready, but with the pressure of living, you know, in poverty or certain circumstances where you know you can help your family out just by declaring for the NBA draft, you do it. I'm sure if he had a chance, maybe he'd do it again, but, you know, just because of his family situation, I don't know, but dealing with all the ridicule and everything that he has to deal with right now i mean i'm sure in hindsight he was like man i wish there was another way you know for me to kind of stay in school you know get to know my body more 
you know, develop my mind more, you know, it is college, higher learning, right? And also kind of just give yourself time because a lot of people are not ready for that extra pressure, you know, and, and I know a lot of people want to talk about the money. I know that's always a fun topic because especially when you ain't got it, that's kind of what you want to talk about. And I get it, definitely get it. But at the same time, it does not automatically make you great. It automatically does not make you play better under pressure. Um, you saw that with the Raptors last night. You know, I mean, um, listen, Zion is a growing young man and he's going to go through his trials and tribulations. And Jeff Van Gundy, love that dude. A lot of reasons why. Um, especially when, since we're talking about nostalgia today, you know, with being a Knicks fan growing up and how he was a coach and everything that he did and, you know, and he wasn't afraid to, you know, get involved in a fight, you know, with his team and, you know, Knicks, Knicks, they got down back in the day, but, um, but yeah, he, he gave us some great insight. He said, I know we're, you know, we live in a society where we're so quick to forget, right? We have like that recency bias, right? Joel Embiid, his first four years in the league, I think they said he only played somewhere around 60 games. First four years, right? It's 82 game season, so that's a, lot, that's a lot of games missed due to injuries. You know, he was also struggling with conditioning and trying to figure out what works best for him because that's another thing in our society because, you know, we forget that genetics plays a huge part into our different types, you know, our body types. And it's not always easy. It's not just eating right and staying in the gym. Sometimes it's a very specific, you know, um, diet plan that you need to be on. Otherwise, you're going to be led astray. And if you're a professional athlete, that goes triple, if not quadruple for you. You know, so, but when Joel Embiid figured it out, now we're talking about him being an MVP, like, every year, right? I mean, that's that's huge. And you can talk about Luka Dantage and um, Jokic. There's a lot of guys who had to find that, you know, even if you want to talk about Chris Paul and how he became a vegan, you know, everybody's had to do something to switch things up. When you're a professional athlete, it doesn't mean you make a lot of money you can do and say and, you know, and eat whatever you want. Like, it does not mean that. If anything, what guys tend to learn as they get older, it means that it's harder, right? Because you have to be the leader. You have to do the things that most people aren't willing to do, like get up in the morning and work out eat the right foods, knowing when you can eat anything in the world that you want to eat, saying the right things all the time because you know you have a microphone in front of your face even when you don't want to or a camera being taken maybe at a wrong angle and you are on a diet but they got that wrong angle, you know, it's all about those angles sometimes and now all of a sudden they think you're out of shape, you know, if they catch you, you know, trying to drive around a, dr a, a McDonald's drive through and they think you were in the drive through you know, it just becomes a whole mess, so... What, what I'm basically trying to say is not making any excuses for Zion because if you know, I've been saying this before, he needed to figure it out. I'm just letting you know he's still trying to figure it out. He's saying physically he's fine, meaning he's healthy. He's not injury ridden, at, I guess, at the moment. But when he says that he doesn't feel like Zion, it does sound like a conditioning issue. It does sound like there's something more so than just injuries. It sounds like I need to figure out what I need to be eating because it's frustrating. And I know a lot of people who've been genetically blessed who just wake up with a six pack and don't understand that because they think that that's normal and that pertains to everybody else. And that's just not the case. I'm sure people would love that. I know I would love that, you know, but it, it takes a little bit more, you know, it takes a little bit more uh, mental, more willpower, you know, knowing that other people can probably eat whatever they want and you have to, you know, sort of, change the way you eat and mod not only you know modify it but you might have to change it completely or maybe that's just not something he was willing to do just yet but in this off season listen he's growing he's growing up he's he's going to change guys and when he comes back he's gonna make a lot of y'all eat your words that's that's really what i'm trying to say he some people are just acting like they're just giving up on him and like he's not gonna figure it out stop he's going to figure it out and when he does it's going to be scary okay so I know people are talking about trading him and all that, and, and that's just silly anyway, because how is somebody that hasn't really played have, you know, that much trade value, you know, especially with his contract? Like, let's pump the brakes. He's going to be fine. He has a great coach there. Everybody, you know, everybody's working for him, 
right? Because what does that mean? If Zion's great, the Pelicans are great. It, it just works hand in hand. And before you know it, we're actually going to have a conversation about Zion actually being an MVP candidate. Mark my words. Next year, obviously he has to be healthy and make some healthier choices. And I'm sure he will. And when he does, we'll be talking about him in a whole different light. So let's just let's pump the brakes. And also, let's act like, let's stop acting like um, OKC hasn't been doing their thing all season. Like, let's also stop acting like that. This team has not gotten the credit they deserve. We haven't seen them on a national TV network. So if you're, if you're just now watching them, I can understand the surprise, you know. But if you have NBA League Pass or whatever connection that you have that you're able to watch teams like that on a night in, night out basis, then you can see, you know, Dort and what he's been doing. I mean, I've seen his growth since, you know, CP3. You know, um, Shea Gilgis Alexander. I mean, what he's been doing is crazy. Crazy. He definitely doesn't get the, you know, um, his just due. But we can't sit here and act like these guys, like, they haven't been doing this. They have been competing. And I, I love what they've been doing, um, personally. But when it comes to the Pelicans, guys, you know they were just eliminated. We know why they were eliminated. <laughs> Let's not... We know it, it had a lot to do with Zion not being there. They need him. Br Brandon Ingram has been awesome. He's, a, he's another one. Like, watch out for Brandon Ingram because you're going to have Zion, Brandon Ingram. You're going to have CJ McCullen doing what he does, you know, from three, mid range, however you want it, orchestrating the offense, playing on defense. They're going to be they're going to be right there in the mix. They just they need another year. A lot of people don't want to hear that because everybody's like, right now, win right now. And sometimes it doesn't work that way. Sometimes you do have to kind of pull back. And I say all that to say this, just like the Portland Trailblazers. Listen, Dame just put y'all on notice, okay? Um, take it how you want. Dame has been not only loyal, he's been patient. He's been doing his job. He's done everything that's been asked of him and possibly more. They chose... You know, to sit him out, you know, shut him down after a while, and it didn't matter anyway. Um, so, but some people, you know, had their opinions about it. But if they're really trying to be serious about competing, and yes, they have some nice young pieces, but Dame is at the point in his career where he deserves a chance to compete for a championship. And that means no disrespect to the young guys, that it really doesn't. You know, because they're growing and they're doing everything that they're supposed to be at their at their time, at their pace, rightfully so. But Dane, when you're a competitor at that level, you saw the way he was sending cats home, you know, those last couple of years in the play in the first round of the playoffs. So to so to constantly have to sit out and not be in that playoff conversation, that that can't sit right. That can't sit right. Knowing after everything is all said and done, knowing how they talk about guys or don't talk about guys after their career I mean Dimwitty I mean he said it best you know if you're not a Steph Curry a Shaq or any of these guys then I, I can't even say Shaq because I think a lot of times that we talk about Shaq as much as we do which is unfortunate by the way is because he's on TV same thing with Charles Barkley right because there's still a lot of forgotten guys that we just don't mention and we act like you know, and I'm not saying that they necessarily have to, like, you don't have to be a superstar to have an impact in this league. Like, I remember guys like Zach Randolph and what he used to do. You know, you want to talk about being able to create and have, have guys play at your speed? Like, you don't have to be super quick or super athletic to get it done? Like, those are the names that come to my mind, but you don't ever really hear people talk about them. Like, they don't, you don't ever give them their flowers, right? Or if something happens to them, right? Or if they happen to come back to the game, then you talk about them. But they deserve their flowers, man. Like, these guys put in work. And it, it's a shame that, you know, when Dinwiddie said that, when he was like, listen, if you're not one of these guys, it don't even matter, right? Like, and it shouldn't be like that. And that's 
part of the reason why I have my platform because I definitely do want to take time out to shout out guys that I remember, you know, that used to, that used to really just had to leave on notice, you know. Even with, they don't talk about Penny Hardaway like that anymore, you know, or Tracy McGrady. You know, they don't talk about those guys and their impact or even Brandon Roy. When I remember when he came in and guys were scared of him and they used to look at him like Kobe, right? Like that type of player. Like he could light you up, you know, offensively. And, and that's a shame. But at the end of the day, basketball is to me is nothing better. NFL is like a close second. Sorry, NFL fans. But I love NFL too. You already know. But Basketball is just something special to me personally. It just holds a special place in my heart. So hopefully, you know, these guys don't get forgotten, you know, and they shouldn't, you know, they had, they had their time. They had their, or even Jeff T, right? We don't really talk about him. You know, I know he, some people would say, yeah, he was a role player. So what? He was a damn good role player. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's like we only started talking about him now because I think he just became... You know the coach at um at Pike, I believe. You know, but but I still follow up. I'm telling you this because I I actually still follow up on these guys because you know you always wonder like these great you know these guys played basketball at such a high level, you know that were once like probably superstars on not only their high school teams on their college teams, you know, and just the NBA is just the best of the best, the creme de la creme, and we're international now. So now you're talking about the best. At, in the whole world, you know, and and that's a beautiful thing. But at the same time, it's like understand that their game is gonna be, you know, lessened to a degree because, you know, not everybody could be Tatum, you know, Luca, Giannis, Embiid, you know, Jokic. I mean, that's that's hard to do. But anyway, just wanna just wanna put that out there for y'all. <laughs> but um, the Raptors. I mean, you can go back and forth about who you thought was going to win and how... I mean, it was a good game, though. When you looked at the Raptors and the Bulls and everything, it was a good game. It was just kind of back and forth. It was it was evenly paced. Like, for the most part, it was evenly paced. But the only problem was, okay, so the Raptors, they're, they got to the line more, free throw line, in case you don't know what I'm talking about. And then you only shoot 50% the whole night. No, it gets better. Let's fast forward all the way to the fourth, right? <laughs> it was debatable when Pascal Siakam, right? When he went for that, you know, he knew the guy was, was already in the air, right? So he made sure he jumped up like he was going to shoot that three and got the contact. I'm sorry, ref. That was a terrible call. Terrible call. <laughs> like, ridiculous. Shouldn't have been called. Um, nothing they can do about it. Okay, cool. But remember Sh Rasheed Wallace? You know what I'm saying? Ball don't lie, bro. Like, when we got to... When Pascal Siakam got to that line, they gave him the three. Right? You're going to shoot three. My man only makes one. I'm sorry. I mean, you could you could blame that on Dr., which is Demar Derozan's uh, daughter. But listen, you're a professional. You got the benefit of the bad call. You that was a call that shouldn't even have been given to you. But you got it. You got it. Pascal Siakam. He's around what seventy percent at the free throw line. Terrible. I mean, you had a chance to tie the game. I mean, this was what less than twenty seconds. Less than 20 seconds left in the game. You had your you had a chance to put your team in a good position to win that game. And free throws is what cost you. Now, I'm not going to be like Alan Hahn, right? And oversimplify it by saying that it, free throws, like you should be able to make every single free throw and you should never miss. Because if you believe that like truly truly in your heart believe that you should never never ever miss then you clearly have never shot free throws in your life <laughs> surrounded by a crowd of people 
after running up and down that court for about an hour. Like, you clearly... <laughs> and that's not giving anybody a pass because that's why I somewhat, you know, worship guys like Kobe Bryant. Like, when they were able to ice those free throws late in the game, knowing the pressure, but that speaks to the preparation of the player, right? Because that's just... That's just what it is. You got to have the ultimate concentration focus in that moment screens or nothing else should matter that should be the point where you should be able to block everything out but it but it also goes back to if everybody can do it then why do we call it great right everybody's not going to be able to do that every professional athlete is not going to be able to do that why i'm sure it's expected of them because they're playing at such a high level but that's just not going to happen Greatness is greatness for a reason. It's easy to be great when there's no pressure, right? It's easy to be great when it's the first quarter, everybody's making their free throws, no problem. But while all of a sudden we're in the fourth and some guys seem to make free throws in the fourth and can't make them in the first, but guys who make them in the first can't make them in the fourth when it matters most. And that's pretty much what it is. And that's no, that's no knock to Pascal, you know, but it just gives a greater appreciation for guys that don't seem to miss in those moments when they know their team is looking at them like you all we got there's nothing we can do right now it's just you at the line in the basket and the ball what are you gonna do you know like it's just one of those moments that can define that definitely define who you are as a player because you can take that as motivation because they did ultimately get knocked out, right? So you can take that as motivation and say to yourself, you know what? Next season, that's not happening. I'm going to be ready next season. And then you can become a whole different type of player. Now, credit to Pascal Siakam, though, because my man just picked up a ball when he was like 18 years old and made it all the way to the league and did all this and wasn't even from the United States. Now, that's impressive. Pascal Siakam, so don't by no means take this as any, like, you know, disrespect. It's just, it's just, you you got to make that separation, though, because sometimes I feel like the lines are blurred, and we need to get back to understanding and appreciating greatness for what it is, because it's not easy to do that. I believe Vince Carter earlier called it basketball anxiety, whatever you want to call it. It's a real thing. It's true. It wasn't just because of the screening. Mm -hmm. It was more so because of the moment. It was because our team needs these free throws. If not, we're possibly getting sent home. It it was that. It was inside his own head about it. Instead of just going to the line and knocking him down like he probably would any other night. And it wasn't just him. It was the Raptors as a whole. You are not going to win going to the going to the free throw line 36 times and only make it half of them. 18 free throws ain't going to get it done, guys. It's, it's not going to get it done. And you had the benefit of the calls. So you have more of the calls, got to the line more. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, shout out, excuse me, to the Bulls. Shout out to DeMar DeRozan and his daughter. You know, Zach Levine. Zach Levine was a beast. I believe he was like, 30? But about 30. Like, Zach is no joke, y'all. I mean, he's one of those guys, too. If it wasn't for the injuries, we'd be talking about Zach, I think, a little bit more often. And we should be talking about him a little bit more often. Could you see what he's able to do? And, and DeMar and Zach's game is, like, very similar in terms of that mid-range from, like, that 12 to 18 feet. And it's true. Like, they're a lethal from that mid-range. You know, it just reminds me of, like, certain guys like like Rip Hamilton back in the day, right? You know, with the... I hate saying back in the day. It makes me feel ancient because it doesn't feel back in the day, you know? But when he was with the Pistons and how it, mid-range was just money, you know? You know, or Prince back in the day. Man, bringing back memories with the Pistons. But, you know, and that, that was a championship team, right? You know, because everybody right now is relying on that three-point shot. And I get it. you got to find ways to mix it up, but... Don't forget up. Don't sleep on the mid range. Those, a lot of those look like automatic shots for some of these guys. You know, they put up a heck of a show. 
Caruso, man, Alex Caruso, we can't say enough about this guy with hustle plays, second chance, you know, points he gives them, um, steals, his tenacity on defense. You can't you can't say enough about this guy. Like that was such a huge pickup and and it's just so sad to say because you know if Lonzo Ball was playing, it I mean the Bulls would be, you know, in a different stratosphere for sure. They would not be in the playing game, you know, playing for their season, you know. Listen, the the Bulls the Bulls are gonna be all right. The Bulls are gonna be all right. They're not gonna get as far as, you know, as we feel like they should. I'm sorry, Zach Levine had thirty nine points. Why am I those nine points matter. Sorry, Zach. But but the Bulls are gonna be alright though. I mean, I really hope all the best for um Lonzo Ball because that injuries that that's it's just such a killer because it's always that what could have been. And you hate that. You know, when you look at Derrick Rose's career and you think about that and you know, and I know he's still playing, but the dude was an MVP, you know, like it's so it's so like uh you know, but that's sports for you sometimes, you know. You just never never know. And it's gonna make a really, really good thirty for thirty. That that's probably like the you know, if you wanna put a positive spin on it. Um <laughs> but those those games were just they were really good. Really good. We can't wait for these series. I know that oh, was that Grizzlies and Lakers series, I know I keep that's that's gonna be a good one, guys, because at the end of the day we're not we know what we wanna happen. Or on paper, I don't want to say one, but on paper, we kind of have an idea. But I think a lot of these guys get, got it right. What, what's going to be the best series out there? The Knicks and Cavs are going to be, I think, number one. For sure, going to be number one. Why? It's just because of the intrigue. That's why when we say the off, the NBA offseason is probably the, one of the best off seasons. Because of the drama. Because you don't know who's going to get picked up. What major star is going to make a move. You know, who's going to be talking back and forth. Like currently, well, right now, you know, Dimwitty and Kuz are going back and forth. You know, and it's like only one of them in the playoffs. But, you know, but it's all right. Kuz is still my guy. So, you know, I hope the Wizards do something, though. Just to, you know, not to get off topic. But I hope the Wizards do something. Because... I like Kuz a lot. I liked him when he was with the Lakers. He won a champ. He helped them win a championship for a reason. I know a lot of people don't want to agree, but you know, basketball is a not, lot more than just putting up points and putting up numbers. I'm telling you, those intangibles that you know, that little impact on the game that necessarily don't show up in the box score. I'm telling you, those things matter. Those things matter. But y'all don't want to believe me, but it sometimes it comes to that. And um, you also got to give. Um, speaking of that, I didn't even give uh, Patrick Beverly his props on the Bulls because. You know, a lot of people, you know, he does say some <laughs> outrageous things sometimes. But you also got to remember he's trying to be in media. So with that, sometimes comes with that. You know, I try not to do that. But, you know, sometimes like, I got bigger bills or, you know, <laughs> no, nah, I'm messing. But, but seriously, Patrick Beverly, his tenacity on defense, what, what he was able to do on Pascal Siakam with his defense. You, you see, he, he can create problems. Like, don't, if he is in the NBA for a reason. Don't think he's not. Don't sleep on him. Don't think he's not capable of doing a lot of things. I know it's easy to kind of just gloss him over and say he's this, he's that, but watch him. Watch how he's utilized. It's for a reason. Just, just throwing it out there. But yeah, so understand that these games is definitely not going to be what you think they are um, because if you're not really paying attention to the off season, you're not really gonna really get a good grasp on why the Cavs and Knicks series is going to be crazy. When Donovan Mitchell, he, I mean Donovan Mitchell, literally before vacation, he thought he was gonna be a Nick, hundred percent. Thought he was gonna be a Nick on vacation. <laughs> I believe he comes back, to, you know, from vacation, and he's like, oh, this deal, you know, fell through. You know, and, you know the Utah Jazz were asking for like his firstborn or something, you know, just ridiculous stuff, you know, it didn't happen, Knicks end up with a solid team, end up paying Brunson, Brunson ends up being worth that contract and some, what he's been able to do, unbelievable, I, I 
can't wait. The X Factors in this series, I know it's not till Saturday, but you know, Knicks fans can't wait. <laughs> By Knicks fans, I mean, I can't wait. <laughs> so, Randall. What, 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 uh, what, what, Zach, what, um, sorry, <laughs> this, this is how I get when I talk about the Nets. What, which Randall are we going to get? And by Randall, I mean Julius Randall. Which Julius Randall are we going to get? Guy is super talented. We see what he's able to do. What he does sometimes, it's like, whoa, like if he were to do some of these things on more of a consistent basis and remain level-headed you could be talking about him in an mvp conversation and i know some people will be like what whoa, whoa. he has that type of potential but that potential can't be unlocked without him and it only can be unlocked by him that's going to be the key to the series i promise you as long as rj barrett is consistent we already the rising of iq emmanuel quickly Ooh, watch out. I believe he's going to have an amazing series. Already saying that. Point blank. I already know what Jalen Brunson's going to do. I saw what he was doing with, with the Mavs. Why do you think the Mavs are not in the playoffs? Jalen? No. Brunson's that dude. As long as everybody plays their role, Toppins, um, McBride, Grimes, I'm telling you, the Knicks are coming, bro. Like, Sims. Man, I love the Knicks, bro. Like, I gotta get a new jersey. Send me a jersey, Knicks, you know? Nah, I'm playing. I'm, I'm gonna get one. But, I have such high hopes. <laughs> but I'm not gonna sit there and act like, you know, Donovan Mitchell, not about the average 40. I'm not gonna sit there and act like, you know, Garden, you know, Garland can't do 25, you know, it's five from five. <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and act like, you know, their team is not capable <laughs> of beating the Knicks. I'm not. But I am going to call it a seven-game series, like I said. Um, it's still, cause just because I have that much respect for the Cavs, I'm not going to sit there and act like this is going to be a cakewalk because it's not. The Knicks are going to be tested. We've been tested all season, right? We've been, I'm not going to say we're proven because you can't prove yourself until the playoffs start. That's when the real game begins. Regular season is conditioning, it's a time for chemistry, getting to know your team, getting to know the game plan, the culture, everything that you had going on. Everything that was trying they were trying to do in training camp, right? In summer camp, summer league, whatever. Getting your guys from draft day to buy into a system, get to know the guys. And once playoff starts, it's just time to elevate. You're you're, you're going past that. You're not just sitting there and just still trying to figure things out. Because if you're trying to do that, one round exit, easy. The Knicks have a nice roster. They can end up surprising y'all. They can be the sleeper team for sure. And maybe they may be too high to call them a sleeper team. But to me, because nobody is talking about them in the East. Because you, you're talking about Boston, you're talking about Philly, and you're talking about the Bucks. Rightfully so, those are proven teams. I understand that. But don't don't sleep on the Knicks. That's all I'm gonna tell you. It's gonna be an interesting series also with Golden State and the Kings. But I'm by no means picking the Kings, but I think the Kings are gonna let y'all know, like we here too though. We here too. And coach of the year, Mike Brown. He letting y'all know we here. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't act like we we ain't about this life. So, like I said, guys, I wasn't playing. More content coming soon. Make sure you listen, like, and subscribe. Tell your friends about me. And I only ask y'all to really do one thing. If you don't do nothing else, just remember: losses equals life lessons. Peace.
Gotta be true to yourself. In a world there's nothing else. Nothing else. Gotta play the game right. Gotta make your path. You scratch, you dig, you lay in your ground. You busting your rounds. Nobody gonna stop you. No ops, no cops. Everything about you looking good. You good, she good. She good. Y'all people really wanna know the reason. What's that? It's that ripple effect. That's just that ripple, ripple. That's just that ripple effect. What you do, come back, come triple. Back, triple.